So how does this help us as Agile coaches and Agile facilitators? Well, we are really good at following what, um, what goes on in conversations from an emotional field perspective. We are, um, as if we've proper facilitators, we're really good at making sure the team gets to the, uh, fulfill the purpose and get to the outcomes of a meeting. Okay, this is another way of looking at conversations. So this offers us another way to look at the, it's called structural dynamics because it actually looks at the structure of a conversation. So structure being one of those four speech acts. Okay, so this is a really great, great way for you to sit back as facilitator and just notice what's happening. Is one person always making all the moves? Is there another person that's always making the opposers, you know, is somebody always following, you know, but actually never coming up with a move. So they just happy to go along with whatever is, is, is happening in the room or what is going on. If we think about some of the patterns that could have a stuck, um, let me share some of those patterns with you. So we have the serial moves. We also have something called courteous compliance. If we're a new group and we get together, potentially until such time as we've grown enough trust and psychological safety with one another, um, we will not psychologically challenge one another either. So that's when we get this pattern of courteous compliance. The count point count, I never can say that. That's why I just say ping pong. The point counterpoint is that pattern of getting stuck in a debate, you know, with no outcome. And this is the one that's really interesting that I want to get to. So there is also something called covert opposition. Okay. And I've learned that whenever there isn't overt competition, if nobody is opposing in the room, there is always covert opposition. The opposers there, you know, we just as human beings, if we are fully into um, our ideas and if we fully engaged in an, an issue, there are always opposers. We, we just don't, we're not just, we're just not that homogenous. So very often um, we can see a, a COVID opposed takes the form of a follow saying, so I'm proposing something and somebody says, um, I suppose that's fine. You know, um, there's a there's an there's an oppose underneath that I suppose, and if we look at the bystand, could also be um, you know the bystand could show up as a as I'm noticing that we are spending uh, a long time on this. That could be an example of a bystand where there's a there's a COVID oppose. Um, very often, I've got a colleague that I love very much um, that whenever you make a move um he will there will be a little bit of silence and then he will make another move okay so until one day i said to him okay so i'm, I'm never quite sure when i when i propose something and you come back with a different proposal i'm not sure that you heard me or that you are opposing me but you you are too polite to say I don't want to do that. Yes, here's, here's what I want to do. Okay, so sometimes, so all of the other speech acts can actually hide a, a COVID opposition. And that's, you know, that the title of this, where I got the title of the talk, that's, you know, that there's COVID opposition when after the meeting, people walk in the passage and they go, can you believe she said that? Okay, so everything that we know about creating psychological safety and also simply calling out when we don't see any, any uh, opposition in the room, um, you know, can help in, um, in stopping this, this pattern. Where we want to move to, so why this is important for us, 